something becomes data when it is used as evidence of some phenomena for some research purpose. And that allows us to recognize that we're surrounded by data. Data is everywhere and, and nowhere at the same time. Everything in this room, the lighting, the people, the dust, the sounds could be treated as data if we chose to, but they're simply part of our atmosphere until we do so. Anything that you're using to help answer research questions becomes your, your data. What is it that you're basing your answers on? And your methodology is how do you get those answers from the data? I'm an arts professor, so uh, we define our research differently depending whether we're involved in practice or in critical studies. And critical studies, our research data is very much the same as other people in the arts and humanities. It's um, words text, sometimes accumulated into coherent articles, sometimes not. It can also be images and sound. Um, as far as production is concerned, the, the research objects are quite often moving images, formerly analog these days, increasingly video. Data management isn't something that we talked about until recently. I mean, certainly when I was going through graduate school in my early years, we never talked about it. Grants liked you to make your data available somewhere eventually, but it wasn't pushed that much. Now it's pushed much more. Um, so for me what it means is, first of all, recognition that when we're doing research, we don't own the data. So typically if we're university professors, the data are owned by the Board of Regents where we are because we're doing that as our capacity as professors or overseeing the work of graduate students. If it's grant-funded data from federal grants, state grants, it's taxpayer money. And so we have a responsibility to manage the data such that other people get to use it afterwards. We all want to exploit our own data in better ways and make them useful not only for ourselves, uh, but if we can, to other people. Uh, most researchers are plagued with the problems of what happens when their graduate students graduate, when their postdocs leave, when their other research staffers move on, or when the software changes, the tools change, the instruments change. It's very difficult to migrate and sustain data so you can combine them and reuse them over long periods of time. Uh, where we would like to do, say, data release one, two, and three, what usually happens is it's uh, versions of data, grad student one, grad student two, grad student three. This is a problem that everyone has. And the sooner that researchers and principal investigators think about this and start to build some management structures that will let them sustain data over time, uh, the better off they'll be. I got a grant from the National Institute of Justice to reanalyze some existing data. In that case, um, the, we had the data available to us, but it was incomplete. There was so much missing data, there were real problems with it, that we never ended up being able to publish anything from it. This was a quantitative data set, and so it had been maintained. The data had been archived, but no one in those days was watching to make sure that it came in in good enough quality so that you could really work with it. I don't think people who are in research or scholarship understand that they're not just speaking to their students and to their peers, they're also speaking to the world. And that it's, you know, you can go ahead and try to write a book for a popular publisher, you know, outside the university press world, but um, if you let your materials be seen and reused by members of the public who may not have academic credentials, it gives your work legs. It gives your work a level of, um, of justification and, a, and, a, and I think a level of gravity that we'll otherwise not have. The library is developing a larger and larger group that has expertise across different kinds of disciplines, different domains, different structures that can help people in managing their data better. So I'm delighted to see that the library here is taking the lead on this. I think between libraries and research offices, that's a major place to get started in getting the word out to everyone. And I think, yes, universities have a real responsibility. The University of California has taken the lead in saying, talking about open access publications and data management, that we need to make our data and our publications available. These are part of the public good. Education is a public good. And we need to make the fruits of that education and that research available to others.